Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Dollar Tree, a Fortune 500 company that operates almost 15,000 stores in the United States and Canada. Dollar Tree is a very large company. They employ about 176,000 people and they actually operate locations in all 48 of the contiguous United States, so there's a good chance there's a store located near you. We've covered a few other dollar store type chains on the channel, but this is actually the first chain where everything in the store is actually a dollar or less. And everything being at that price point is actually pretty impressive to me considering the large variety of products that they carry. We'll be taking a look at two locations in this video, but before we get further into exploring them and discussing the greater details of Dollar Tree, let's take a moment to discuss this episode's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Skillshare is a great place to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, and it's the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. And Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Personally, I've been enjoying the graphic design and cooking courses. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, but because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link down in the description and get a two-month free trial. So after the video is over, I highly recommend clicking that link and giving Skillshare a try. Now let's get back to discussing Dollar Tree. Like I mentioned earlier, Dollar Tree carries a large variety of products. We're looking at the office supply section here, and the fact that you can get a calculator for a dollar is just really amazing to me. They also carry things like cleaning supplies, party supplies, health and beauty stuff, food, snacks, housewares and glassware, toys and gifts, clothing, gift wrap and gift bags, pet supplies, electronics, automotive stuff, and even teaching supplies. I wonder if this Ghostbusters bag is actually officially licensed. But honestly though, I have a hard time thinking of a product category that they don't carry here. Dollar Tree got its start in 1986 under the name Only a Dollar and was founded by Doug Perry, Macon Brock, and Ray Compton. Here we've got some Shasta soda, which carries a lot of childhood nostalgia for me, and I didn't used to see Shasta anywhere, but now I'm finding out that pretty much all dollar stores carry Shasta soda. But back to some of the history on this place. They started out with five of the only one dollar stores, but then quickly started to expand, mostly in enclosed malls at first. In 1993, they changed the name of the stores from only a dollar to Dollar Tree as a way to address what could be a multi-price point strategy, but it looks like they've stuck to that dollar price point. What's even more impressive about that dollar price point is you do have a lot of generic brands, but there's also quite a few name brand items here as well. I have to say too, I'm really impressed with the condition of the stores. The aisles are nice and wide, the stores are brightly lit, and they seem to be pretty well maintained for the most part. Which again is really surprising to me when they operate at that dollar price point. We had looked at Dollar General stores on this channel in the past, and those stores were just a disaster. Dollar Tree as a whole seems to be doing fairly well. The only place they seem to be struggling is with the family dollar stores that they purchased in 2014. We covered the family dollar stores recently on the channel because they had announced as part of a way to try and fix those issues they would be closing around 390 stores. And this was kind of interesting, this uh, brand of chopped tomatoes from Italy, Mark actually recognized these from working in restaurants and he was actually fairly impressed to see this here for just a dollar. And they are actually from Italy which is also kind of impressive. I love how the ingredients just say, tomatoes, that's it. <laughs> Doing some more browsing through the grocery section though, I was really impressed with the amount of name brand items they had that you would find in traditional grocery stores, but at a much cheaper price at that, you know, $1 price point. Got Campbell's Soup stuff there, Chef Boyardee. The selection seems to be a lot better than what you would find at other dollar store chains. You really could do a good chunk of your grocery shopping here. The only thing that's really missing is fresh produce and meat. Even the baking supply section was pretty impressive. There's actually a decent selection of spices and stuff here. The only other dollar store chain I can think of with, you know, close to this selection of stuff is the 99 cents only stores. Now we're over in the glassware and plates section and 
Holy crap, do they have a huge selection here. And surprisingly, the glass isn't super thin. We kind of, you know, thumped some of these and stuff, and it's really thick, decent glass. And again, I'm really surprised with just how clean the stores are. I mean, the floors are a little scuffed up, but I don't think it's too much more than what you would see in a normal grocery store. It also doesn't feel super crowded like you're going to be tripping all over stuff like we saw in Dollar General and Family Dollar. Do you guys remember those collector stickers that you used to get at the grocery store and put in the albums when we were kids? They have those here as well, and this is one of the few, I guess you could call messy areas of the store, but I'm not surprised this area is targeted towards kids and they're kind of a mess. And really the only other messy area we saw was the nail polish area where it looks like people have been testing the nail polish colors on the shelves and there's a little bit of a spill down here which I could see that being a pain in the butt to clean up. But otherwise the store just looks pretty decent. This is some more of the health and beauty area and this is something else I was surprised to find. These are name brand toothbrushes and toothpaste and they're full size and they're just a dollar which is a lot cheaper than you would find at a grocery store or even at Walmart. Back in 2012, Dollar Tree started accepting manufacturer's coupons, and I don't know if you guys have seen some of those crazy Dollar Tree haul videos that are on YouTube, but it seems like people get some really amazing deals here. I mean, they've even got some Dove stuff here, and I know that Dove branded stuff is not cheap normally. Now we're taking a look at some of the kids' stuff and toys, and these are the kind of things that we buy pretty often at Dollar Tree, like the glow sticks and glow bracelets and stuff to take to like 4th of July fireworks displays, and They've even got some really annoying musical instruments here that you can buy for your nieces and nephews to drive their parents crazy. And here's something I thought that was kind of neat. These are like generic Legos, which I've seen before, but I've never seen them sold, you know, separately sorted by color. That's kind of interesting. A lot of the toys that they have here are kind of the generic grocery store toys that you see or things that you would use for cheap stocking stuffers. Things like, you know, dart guns and generic Nerf guns. They've also got these caps here, which I can I can smell those caps just looking at them. But there's also some name brand stuff here as well, like these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys. They even got some fun stuff to play dress up with. And then here's some Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars, some of them generic and some of them name brand. And they even have a small handful of Star Wars toys. This looks like it's overstock stuff from the Rogue One film. I think $1 is pretty good for a Star Wars action figure, even if it is from an older film. Now let's take a look at a second location, and I actually have some history with the spot that this Dollar Tree store is now in. This used to be Video Paradise, which was one of my favorite places in the world. It was a video store that survived all the way until 2016. This is probably the largest video store I've ever been in, and I rented videos and video games all the way up until they closed down, and I even purchased some stuff during the liquidation sale. They had a huge selection, including a lot of stuff that's still not available on streaming services. And they had arcade games, I used to take discs that I bought at Goodwill to get cleaned here. And they even had the old famous adult section. This place really was like stepping into a time portal into the 1990s, and I really do miss it. And the store was actually doing okay, the reason that it's now gone is because the landlord decided not to renew their lease in favor of having this Dollar Tree move in. The owners decided it would be too hard to start over again in a new location and they just decided to retire. And I haven't been back in here since Dollar Tree moved in just out of bitterness towards them for running out one of my favorite local businesses. But I figured this video would be a good excuse to go take a look and see if there's any vestiges of the old Video Paradise store remaining and unfortunately there's not. This store seemed to be just as clean and organized as the first location we looked at. And you'll see here again the aisles are very wide and easy to navigate. Something interesting to point out is the large selection of Hallmark greeting cards that they have. It used to be that you had to go to a Hallmark Gold Crown store in order to get Hallmark stuff, but now they have it pretty much everywhere, including Dollar Tree for just a dollar, so I'm guessing that's another reason why the Hallmark Gold Crown stores are starting to struggle quite a bit. Greeting cards can get kind of expensive anymore, so a dollar seems like a really good deal. This location also has a small dairy and frozen food section. Not every Dollar Tree seems to have this. I know the first location we looked at didn't. It seems like the toy selection wasn't as big at this location as it was at the first one, though. They do have some of the same stuff, though. We've got some plastic ninja weapons here, which was the staple of every 80s and 90s kid's ninja Halloween costume. 
Dollar Tree's rate of expansion has been pretty impressive. If you look at the history of it, it seems like since the early 2000s every year they've added at least a few hundred new stores, either through opening brand new locations or acquiring smaller dollar store chains. The variety of products they carry really is amazing. They even have a helium balloon area which is in direct competition with Party City, another store chain that's not doing well and I wonder if the competition from Dollar Tree is one of the things that's really hurting them. We even found DVD movies at this location which are even cheaper than the $5 bin at Walmart. It seems like the only misstep they've really made is their acquisition of Family Dollar, which it doesn't surprise me that they're having issues there. The Family Dollar business model is quite a bit different from Dollar Tree's. Dollar Tree stores just seem to be a lot nicer than places like Dollar General and Family Dollar. I mean, hey, we didn't find 27 different displays of Raid Bug Spray in the store. I guess I can say my only real complaint is that they ran my favorite mom and pop video store out of business. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on Dollar Tree. Is it a chain that you shop at regularly? Let me know down in the comments below. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on Dollar Tree. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you've got a few minutes, uh, why not check out one of these other videos? I've even got some videos that I did covering other dollar store chains. And lastly, make sure to follow at the social media links down below because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.